Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Iran says significant progress made on nuclear deal. United Nations Court resumes hearings on Rohingya genocide case. Chile's Constitutional Convention debates new text. We speak to Roman Vega on the key challenges facing health activists today. We begin with Iran, which has stated that significant progress has been made in the talks to revive the 2015 nuclear deal. However, Foreign Minister Spokesperson Saeed Khatibzadeh has said that the remaining issues are the hardest. Reports have suggested that the ongoing round of talks in Vienna could yield a result in the coming weeks. Reuters reported last week that a US-Iranian deal was taking shape which included phases of mutual steps. The broad objective was to lift the sanctions against Iran in exchange for limits on its nuclear activities. Other steps including the unfreezing of $7 billion of Iranian funds held in South Korea and the release of Western prisoners. The new agreement reportedly includes the U.S. granting waivers on sanctions of Iran's oil sector instead of outrightly removing them. Issues also remain over Iran's demand for guarantees that the U.S. will not withdraw from the deal. In a separate development, Iranian lawmakers presented six conditions for the revival of the nuclear deal on February 20th. These were part of a statement addressed to President Ebrahim Raisi by 250 legislators. They have argued that Iran must set clear red lines which include guarantees for non-withdrawal. The statement says that the United States and other parties must pledge that they will not resort to the snapback mechanism. Legislators have also reiterated the demand for the lifting of all sanctions and a verification process after which Iran could scale back its nuclear advances. In our next story, the International Court of Justice, or the ICJ, has resumed proceedings on a case related to the genocide of Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. In August 2017, the military launched a brutal campaign against supposed armed groups in the Rakhine state. Conservative estimates place the death toll of the ensuing violence at over 10,000. According to Human Rights Watch, 200 Rohingya villages were burned down. The United Nations mission in Myanmar stated that over 700,000 people had been forced to flee. It stated that the military had carried out mass killings and gang rapes with a quote, genocidal intent. The United Nations recommended that military chief Min Ong Lang and five other generals be prosecuted for these crimes. The case before the ICJ was brought by the Gambia, which said that Myanmar had breached the 1948 Genocide Convention. In 2019, now ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi defended the military's actions in court and asked that the genocide allegations be dismissed. In a major ruling in 2020, the court imposed emergency provisional measures on Myanmar. The legally binding order required the country to prevent genocidal violence against the Rohingyas. The proceedings scheduled for this week will focus on the preliminary objections raised by Myanmar. The military junta, which is led by Min Hong Lang, is expected to present the country's case. Next, we go to Chile where the Constitutional Convention has opened debate on a new Magna Carta. The 155-member body convened its first plenary session last week. Among the key articles approved in the declaration that Chile is a regional, plurinational and intercultural state. It recognizes that the country is made up of territorial entities within a framework of equity and solidarity. The article was approved with 112 votes in favour and 34 against. It has changed the definition of Chile as a unitary state that is part of the current Pinochet-era constitution. The convention has also approved text which states that Chile's territorial organisation is formed of autonomous regions, indigenous territorial autonomies and special territories. It has also established that peoples and nations pre-existing the state must grant free, prior and informed consent on matters which affect their constitutional rights. 
These articles are a crucial development given that indigenous peoples are not recognized in the existing text. The Constitutional Convention has also approved 10 articles related to the country's justice system. All bodies and persons involved in the judicial process must ensure equality, parity and a gender perspective. Chile's Constitutional Convention emerged out of the 2019 social uprising mass protests. It must present the final draft of the new Magna Carta by July 4th. This will be followed by a public referendum which will be overseen by incoming president Gabriel Boric. And finally, we bring you an excerpt from a conversation with the global coordinator of the People's Health Movement, Roman Vega. He outlines the key challenges facing health activists today and the priorities moving forward. Let's have a look. El 2022, eh, los desafíos son, son, son grandes. Eh, tendremos que continuar la resistencia, la denuncia, el rechazo a las políticas neoliberales en el plano global, regional y local. Eh, hay que darle continuidad a las luchas porque las decisiones de la Organización Mundial de la Salud sean realmente en favor de quienes han sido eh, sometidos a situaciones de desigualdad entre países y entre el norte y el sur global. Ese es un, un reto enorme que pasa por la democratización de las decisiones en el marco de los contenidos de la política de salud de la OMS y de las seccionales de la OMS en cada región. Eh, tendremos que pedirle, por ejemplo, a las, eh, a las seccionales de la OMS, como la Organización Panamericana de la Salud en la región de las Américas, que sean transparentes, que no funcionen alrededor de los intereses creados por los gobiernos y las élites que representan y que tengan un mayor compromiso con los sectores populares, los trabajadores, las poblaciones indígenas, las mujeres, los jóvenes, los afrodescendientes que han vivido la tragedia de esta pandemia, las muertes, las infecciones y las secuelas económicas, sociales, de todo esto que este dra drama tan tremendo que hemos vivido en esta época. Tendremos que hacer eso, resistir, buscar cambios en las políticas de la Organización Mundial del Comercio, que está colocando una agenda al servicio de los intereses de la Big Pharma, del de complejo que denominamos médico industrial financiero coaligado en función de convertir la salud en un negocio para acumular capital. Eso lo tendremos que seguir haciendo. Pero al mismo tiempo hay que levantar, eh, aprovechar la oportunidad de crisis económica, social y política que vivimos y de dinámicas de movilización para buscar cambios, profundizar los cambios, transformar las realidades que tenemos. Lo que haga el movimiento de la salud de los pueblos tiene que hacerse en ese contexto. Yo creo que nos estamos preparando justamente para ello. Estamos decidiendo desarrollar una enorme campaña reclamando el derecho al acceso a las vacunas, a los servicios de salud, eh, la transformación de los sistemas de salud eh, el comprender las relaciones entre la sociedad y la naturaleza, es decir, un enfoque eh, ligado a los determinantes, a la determinación social, económica, política de la salud, las relaciones de poder detrás de esas relaciones eh, que, que informan eh, lo que está pasando en, en el marco de las crisis que hemos dicho que estamos viviendo. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Yeah.